Well, we all wonder that. Anyway, in Europe where you are, the ECB, of course, is addressing an annual press conference on banking supervision. Uh, that's actually uh, probably later today. And, uh, of course, we have the Bank of England due to release details of its 2017 stress test. Tie these two events together for us in terms of outlook on the region's banking sector. Well, it really sounds like both the European Central Bank and the Bank of England want to make it pretty clear whatever the outcome of Brexit uh, will be, um, things are in good hands at the supervisors of the central banks in both London and Frankfurt. Uh, the European Central Bank's supervisory board chair, Danielle Nui, and her vice chair, Sabine Lautenschläger, today made it pretty clear that. Uh, the ECB is getting prepared for all kinds of potential outcomes of the Brexit. They also said they will prevent any regulatory or supervisory arbitrage or a race to the bottom, as they call it, when, to, when it comes to, you know, national supervisors trying to lure uh, banks from the United Kingdom into their jurisdictions by giving them, you know, advantages when they apply for bank licenses in the different national national uh, supervisory districts, the ECB says, no, we want to uh, create a level field of competition for all banks and we will be the ones in charge when it comes to licensing UK banks here in the Eurozone. The Bank of England is about to start the strictest stress tests ever. It said that it has uh, uh, applied or it puts into effect models for the stress, stress tests that simulate a very negative environment for the banks in the UK. An environment that imagines uh, global growth uh, to be continuously weak, interest rates persistently weak and low, world trade falling as well as cross-border banking activity. A very negative scenario. Of course the Bank of England is eager to say that we shouldn't misunderstand this as any kind of negative forecast. It's simply the most negative scenario for stress test imaginable, which also means that if the banks in the UK pass this stress test, they show that they're quite resilient and that they are, as probably Theresa May would put it, the UK's Prime Minister, ready for business. Hmm. Well, Conrad, two economic data the investors in Europe are actually eyeing today it happens to be the Euro area loan growth and, of course, the latest German IFO business climate index. Talk us through these two uh, data. Well, both uh, data is really positive. Loans to uh, Eurozone households have been growing at the fastest pace since 2011, is what the ECB said today. And the German EFO index of business climate uh, climbed to 112.3 points from 100 and 11 in February. That's above the average forecast among economists and it's the highest level of business confidence here in Germany since uh, in, in six years, which might come as a bit of surprise given, you know, the reluctance on the equities markets here due to the um, hesitance toward Trump. But we shouldn't forget that China is such an important trade partner for our country. And the data we've been getting from China uh, recently has been all good. Like today, it was reported that the manufacturing sector in China uh, posted strong earnings, an increase of a third uh, since uh, the first two months of uh, last year, that's very strong uh, earnings data for the Chinese manufacturing sector, which has a positive impact also on business climate here in Germany. So for the moment, uh, in terms of business climate, the mood is very good here. Hmm. Very good, Conrad. Well, it's just the beginning of the week, so we'll find out um, in the next five days how the week eventually turns out. Thank you very much for your time, Conrad. And at the debt market here in Nigeria, bullish sentiment dominated both the markets last week. Buy side players came into action, depressing average treasury bills yield by 60 basis points to 19.0%. Similarly, the bond space saw a bullish run as average bonds yield edged lower by four basis points to close at 15.8%. Let's get a sense of how the market has started the new week. I'm being joined by a fixed income dealer with Wemma Bank. Ifani Akweche. Good afternoon, Ifani. Thank you very much for joining us. Okay, good afternoon. How is the first trading day of the week? Bring us up to speed as to how the market has started this week. 
Um, okay, yeah, um, it's the first training day of the week. Um, but right now, we are the season call market. We can see um, that the market is quite stable. But um, that's to say that it's stable, but more bearish. Yeah, as a result of um, you know the effects on uh, last week, uh, last week, which um, really affected the market liquidity in the market. Um, although we had funding flow into the system uh, at, at last week, but due to the effect of um, market liquidity, negative market liquidity in the system, um, the market liquidity is still quite low, even as um, the FAC inflow and uh, hit the market. Uh, now, generally speaking, what is your outlook for this week? Uh, well, for the week, um, even as I'm talking to you now, uh, the CBN has offered some um, deals for, for sale at the Omo auction. We also saw the CBN trying to supply a lot of assets to the market, and all those are pointing towards the further using the system liquidity. So in that uh, line, we really expect the, the market to continue on the bearish uh, um, trend, especially as market, um, market participants try to fund um, FX funding in, in the system and CBN continues to supply the market. All right, thank you very much um, for your time, if I. And in Libya, the National Oil Corporation says it has identified illegal efforts to sell crude oil without its approval and warned potential buyers not to enter into such contracts. Factions based in eastern Libya have previously tried to sell oil independently of NOC in Tripoli, but their moves have been frustrated by UN resolutions that remain in place. According to the statement, this could cost the state of Libya hundreds of millions of dollars in lost revenue. The NOC reasserted in the statement that it has the it was the only body authorized by UN resolutions to export crude oil and oil products from Libya and that only the 16 international oil companies that already hold contracts with NOC could buy oil or charter tankers from Libyan ports. It warned that entering into contracts with other buyers could lead to serious legal consequences and financial losses for those concerned. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back shortly.